Hey there, beautiful people. It's Pastor Dante here, and we had a couple of technical difficulties with our service this morning, but we wanted to get it back to you. So we're going to play it back. We're going to play it back live for you, and we hope you jump on, share this, enjoy it. It's going to be great. Okay, so we're jumping on live right now in three, two, God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, God chasers. God bless you. I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Listen, I, I want to apologize if we're having any uh, technical difficulties. If you've noticed any technical difficulties, we apologize. We're sorry. We're trying to get it resolved right now. But I'm telling you what, we still going to praise the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says that I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter into its course with praise. I will say this is the day. Oh, Y'all not ready to have church. I will say this is the day. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. Listen, if God still, if God woke you up this morning, it's because you have purpose. If God woke you up this morning, you're not hearing me today. If God woke you up this morning, he, he woke you up with purpose and a plan for your life. I just want you to take 30 seconds and just say, I got purpose. I got purpose. I got stuff to do. Amen. And can't no devil in hell. Look, I'm going to get old school. I'm going to be like my dad. I can't no devil in hell. Ain't no, ain't no devil in hell stop me from the purpose that God has for me. I have a walk in my spirit. I have a go forward in my spirit. And I'm just going to go on in Jesus' name. My grandma used to say, I'm just going to walk on in Jesus' name. I, I don't care what's happening. I don't care what's going on in your life. Listen, what I want to encourage you to do is take a step. The Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. So all you have to do is step and then let God put it in order. Your whole life can be out of order, but you take a step. You, your whole life can be messed up, but if you take a step towards purpose, God will start lining things. God will shift the planet underneath your feet. Do you understand that concept that your steps are ordered by God? Even your missteps. Oh, even your missteps. Even your missteps. God said, even your missteps. I need you to understand. Somebody said he preaching wrong. No, I'm preaching right. Romans 8 and 28 says this. It says that all things are, uh, it says that all things are working. Even the bad things, even the sour notes, they're all working together for, for my good. I come from a, a little bit of a musical background. And I know that if you just listen to the trombone section by itself, it's going to sound bad. <laughs> but if you put it together with the orchestra, it's working. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Huh? If you listen to just the strings by themselves, they don't always sound beautiful. There's some sour notes. But when you put it together with the rest of the orchestra, it's working. That's why the Bible says, forsake ye not the assembling of yourselves together. You thought that was about going to church, but it wasn't. It was about, it was about Voltron. <laughs> It was about, well, I need some of y'all to get the spirit of Voltron in your, I need, the, I need you to be, some of y'all, that's anachronistic, that went way over, what in the world is a Voltron, but there's some, there's some, uh, there's some Generation X people walking around here, they're like, I know exactly what a Voltron is, and so, what, what, oh, let me help, it may be uh, Power Rangers, Power Rangers, see, I knew I would get there, I just, Give me some time, man. You need a Power Rangers. See, you see, you be watching Power Rangers, right? And the, the Rangers would all be, oh, I'm off my message already. The Rangers would be all fighting. Indiana, you don't know about the Power Rangers. You stay with Voltron. You stay with, Voltron. You stay with me. We in Voltron. The Rangers would be getting whooped. All of a sudden, some giant. All of 
Paul said, I'm preaching Power Rangers. Open your Bible to uh, the book of Power Rangers. The, the, uh, some giant would come to face the Power Rangers. And they, there'd, be, there'd be a five minute fight where the Power Rangers would singularly try to face that giant. Y'all yeah. not hearing me. They would singularly try to fight that giant. So you try to fight the giants by yourself. This is the problem. You trying to fight the issues by yourself, but sometimes you gotta connect with somebody. So all of a sudden, the white ranger will hook up with the black ranger. Oh, 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 y'all didn't know I was preaching racism in here. The white ranger will hook up with, the pink ranger will hook up with the yellow ranger. The yellow ranger hooked up with the blue ranger. And all of a sudden, they became giants themselves. They became giants. Listen, I'm trying to wake up the giant in you. But it's going to have to do with the assembling of yourselves together. Stop, but forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Because when we come together, Lord have mercy. When we come together, all of a sudden we create something that none of us could have been on our own. None of us could have been by ourselves. That's why I got these beautiful people up here. I said, I said, I need some people on the stage, man. I need some people in the room. I need some people because there's something different. Something happens when we get together. Oh, Lord Jesus. When we get together, the Bible says one can put a thousand to flight, but two can put ten thousand to flight. Now I got my thousand. I know you got your thousand. But when we get together, all of a sudden we can there is a there is a multiplicity of unity. We just get together and we work it out, amen? So I'm so grateful for you guys being here. I'm grateful for you guys being online today. I, and, and excuse again, if you're having some kind of technical difficulty, it's okay, we're gonna repost this. We're gonna run it back. I might, even, I might even throw some money at it. We might boost it a little bit. So we, you know what I'm talking about it. I might, I might throw some money at it. And we can sponsor it a little bit because this word today, this word today, this word today is going to matter to you. This word today is going to matter to you. Listen, if it, if it does it again, off air, on air. Boom. Off air, on air. That's what we're going to do. Off air, on air. But listen, this word today is going to matter to you. Say, say it to yourself. This word is going to matter to me. This word, this word that we are, that we, that I have for you today is going to matter to me. You know how I know? Because that, that's when you get spiritual interference. Yes. You know how I know? I start having all kinds of technical disruptions. See, you don't understand that. The devil is the prince of the power of the air. Are y'all with me today? The devil is the prince of the power of the air. Look at this. Lights going all crazy. I don't know what they're doing back there. Look, <laughs> look. This is what's happening. It is the prince of the power of the air. It's, it's, it's something you can't do nothing about. It. All you can do is walk your way through it. All you can do is pray your way through it. All you can do is step your way through it. And I'm looking for some people today that say, I'm just going to get through it. I just got to go through it to get through it. I got to go through it to get through it. I heard somebody say this the other day. It's been making so much sense to me. He said, if you're going through hell, keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Eventually, you're going to get through it. You're going to get, yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So I'm going to preach this message. All right, and, and amen. And we're going to capture it. We're going to record it. And we're going to repost it. And we're going to be good to go. Okay? All right. Y'all don't be reading the screen and all that stuff. I need y'all focused. Okay? Where y'all need some? Where y'all Bibles at? This is what we need. Okay, Look. All right. All right. All right. Look, I'm going to get in trouble now. You didn't tell them to bring Bibles. I shouldn't have had to. All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. All right, here we go. Here we go. Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. We're going to start reading about verse 21. Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. And I, I, have my, I have my laptop out here, but this is in my spirit. This is this message in my spirit. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. The message that I'm going to preach to you today changed my life. It, as I was preaching it, yeah. it was changing something on the inside of me. As I was preaching it, it was changing something on the inside of me. And I'm praying today that it changes something on the inside of you. Amen. I'm praying today that it's changing something on the inside of you. Look at somebody and say, I'm changing today. I'm changing today. And so it starts with, it starts with this, this beautiful season. Now, this beautiful season came right out of a nightmare season. 
this beautiful season, before I start reading, this beautiful season came right out of a nightmare season where God was so displeased with the earth that he flooded the earth. He was so displeased with what was happening on earth that he flooded the earth. And, and what, what you need to know is that every time you come out of a nightmare, there's a promise connected. Right. Every time you come out of a basket, every time you come out of a, oh, we talked about Jonah. Every time you come out of a drowning season, you got to know that there is a promise connect. See, this is why I didn't drown. Y'all, everybody else drowned, but I survived. See, this is it's something that would have killed somebody else. You survived it. Some things that would other people would have drowned. They would have went back to drinking. They would have went back to smoking. They would have went back to their old ways. They would have went back to... I'm going to say another word. I'll, I'll be careful right here, Janelle. They went back to... Uh, yeah. I want to just say... I'm, yeah, I'm going to read the scriptures. I'm, I'm going to read the scriptures. Y'all ain't going to get me in trouble out here. Lose all my members, everything. And he said, hoeing. Yeah. What, uh, that, that's why I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I would have said that, but I'm not going to say that. You go back to your old ways. Go back to old things that you would do. You go back to those, oh, don't start preaching me too soon, Ebony. Don't start preaching me too soon. You get back into old cycles and systems yeah. of things. But, but understand this, you, you didn't drown. You survived. So here's the season. Well, I'm going to give you the punchline early. Here's the season to start a new cycle. As we come out of this pandemic, as we come out of this mess that we've been in, as we come out of, uh, uh, of this social situation. Now, understand this. I, I need you to understand something. When Noah landed on Mount Ararat, the, the earth still hadn't become dry. So God will let you off in a dry place when everybody else is still drowning. God will drop you off in a dry place when everybody else is still dry. Oh, y'all. Yeah. So understand, when I say I'm coming out of a thing, we wrote, we wrote a song called You Brought Me Out. When I, when I say I'm coming out of a thing, it is a celebration that I'm coming out. Yeah. Maybe everybody else is not. They might be experiencing second waves. They might be going through a, a second parts of, of a pandemic. And there might be things that still need to change. But me, as for me and my house, you brought me out. Me out. <laughs> you brought me out. And so I'm going to celebrate in that place. And so what, what Noah does is right after this, right after this difficult season, right after this tragic season, and it's tragic. You know what's tragic? I'm still in my introduction. That's what's tragic. That's the first part that's tragic. <laughs> That's the first part that's tragic. The second part that's tragic is this, though. Look, understand this. When God, said, when, when, when God said that you were free, other people were still drowning. Yeah. Now, understand this. When y'all was all free, you was wanted. When y'all were all free, you were saying, that people say, Moses, uh, Noah preached for 100 years. It's going to rain without one sign or drop of rain. Because understand this, it had never rained. It's so hard to tell people something's gonna happen that they've never seen before. They only know the old ebony. So that when you try to tell them, no, God is about to do a new thing in my life, they have no context for the new thing. They only think about the old thing. They only have context for the old thing. And that's why people can't go with you everywhere. Because they don't have any context for the old for the new thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so Noah is preaching for a hundred years. Hey, it's going to rain. Hey, it's going to rain. And he's building, he's building an ark. Now, this has to be good. Now, we don't know exactly where he built the ark, but we know that it was desert. Some of y'all building a ship in a dry place. Oh, uh, PK. You see, what you're building for has not yet happened. What you're preparing for has not yet happened. And so to you, it's weird. To you, it, it doesn't work. To you, to you, it, it, and to other people, it seems weird. 
that you're trying to put your checking account in order. That you're trying to get your you, that you're trying to get your affairs in order. Can you can, that you cooking whole meals for just you? hearing me right now. I'm trying to get my affairs in order because I'm telling y'all it's gonna rain. Oh, y'all ain't ready. To. I'm telling y'all it's gonna rain. So I gotta start preparing now. I gotta start. People start thinking you crazy. People start thinking you crazy. No, no, no. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. I gotta get my budget lined up. I gotta start this business. I gotta get the 501c3. And I don't know even. I don't even know what that means or stands for. But somebody said I gotta have one. So I gotta start getting things in. Oh, it's gonna. It's gonna rain. You look crazy building something. Building a boat in a place where there's no water. Building a ship in a place, but see what that what I'm telling you is that ship is going to be protection for you in a season that you're not yet in. Yeah. So I got to start building right now. Look at somebody say, I'm going to build it right now. I'm going to build it right now. I'm going to build it. Some of y'all looking at me crazy because y'all know we're not online and I'm preaching the heck out of this message. And y'all like, no, no, understand. I'm building it for a season we're not in yet. I'm going to build it right now. So he's telling them, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, it's going to rain. It's tragic. It's tragic. It's tragic that the only people he could convince was his own family. The only people you say, oh, well, he could, he could have just made his family. No, you can't make nobody do nothing. So at least he had a ministry to his family. Lord have mercy. At least he had a ministry to his family. And he, he was able to convince them to get on the ship. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they get on the ship. And they pull the door closed. They pull the door closed. And then drip. 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 You ever been you ever been rained on and there was no clouds? You ever you know how you be like, what? <laughs> Imagine if it had never rained. What? Drip. 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 See, this is you gotta learn how to celebrate the drips. It don't all come at once. PK. <laughs> It don't all come at once. I got to celebrate the drips. Lord, have mercy. I got to celebrate the drips. I get a little bonus over here. I got to celebrate the drip. I, I get a little extra right here. I got to celebrate the trip. Refund on my taxes. I got to celebrate the drip. It doesn't know it all happen at once. I got to celebrate the Did you know? Did you know? Did, I'm back to my Voltron message. Did you know that all rain is, is an amalgamation of drips? Do you know that all, all rain is, is an accumulation of drips? So you gotta be thankful for the drip. Oh, y'all, this a whole other sermon. I haven't read my scripture yet. I gotta be grateful for the drips. I gotta be grateful for the drips because those drips add up. Those drips add up. Listen, I'm gonna help you right here. Joy doesn't come all at once. It comes in drips. Joy doesn't come up. Peace don't come all at once. It comes in drips. It comes in little expressions of peace to where I get so many drips that I just want to have peace now. So now I'm, 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 now I'm, I'm looking for the rain. Lord have mercy. I'm looking for the rain. Go out there and look again. Look, I got the theologians that come with me. Go out there and look again. It's, it's going to be raining. I'm telling you, it's going to be raining. I'm building this boat. I'm building this ship. I'm building my life. I'm going to keep my house clean. Lord have mercy. I, I don't have nobody right now, but when I do have somebody, we're going to live in a clean house. I, I'm going I'm to keep this situation. I, I, I'm going to keep. Oh, man. I, I wish I could really preach how I really. Sometimes I need a, I need a, a, a private preaching session. <laughs> Some people, everybody ain't gonna get this. Amen? You gotta prepare now for what you wanna see in the future. You gotta prepare now, Noah, for what you wanna see in the future. So Noah starts preparing. He builds his ship in the middle of the desert. All of a sudden, it starts to rain. You guys know the story. You got it from Sunday school. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, and Noah, his family, and the animals were safe. And they get on this ship, and they're on the ship, and the, the deluge comes. Now, I want you to understand something. The water comes from above, yeah. and it comes from below. Yeah. The water comes from above, 
and it comes from below. Listen, even your, your difficult situations are watering your life. Even the hard things in your life, that, and, and, you, and you won't realize that you float till you get into enough water. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? You won't realize it. You won't realize that you're buoyant. You won't realize it. You see, you see the old you. The old you would have sunk. The old you was like an anchor. It would have sunk you right down to the ground. But the new you is buoyant. Lord have mercy. So even when the difficult waters come, I, 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 I can get along. Are y'all with me today? For my 15 minute introduction, are y'all with me? The 20, was it a 20 minute introduction? And now we get to Genesis chapter eight. Here we go. Genesis chapter eight and verse around 20, and Noah has gotten off his boat, he's gotten off his ship, and he, he does something significant. He, he makes a sacrifice unto the Lord. And this is the first, see, you got to understand in Genesis that, that it talks about, uh, particularly like in chapter 19, uh, in, in some of these areas, it says that the, your sin sends a, a foul smell to God. Your sin sends a foul smell to God. So the first scent after the cleansing of the earth is of Noah's sacrifice. And the Bible said that it was a sweet smell. It was the sweetest smell on earth. That's why you got to release your sacrifice. This is what worship looks like. It looks like me releasing my sacrifice. That's why I got to sing along with Bonnie them. Even though I know they're they, they not singing at the same time as me. That's okay. I got to sing along with them because I'm releasing something. I'm releasing the sacrifice. When Janelle's up there, I got to release the sacrifice that she's releasing. Okay, and then all of a sudden the Bible says there's a sweet aroma, there's a sweet savor on earth, and here's here's where we show up, right at chapter eight, and then God takes over, and He says this, and we'll read. It says, "And the Lord God smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in His heart, what? Listen, there are things that God's saying about you that He hasn't pronounced." There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a thought in God's heart concerning you. Lord have mercy. There's a thought in God's heart concerning you. And he said, he said in his heart, I will not again curse her. I will not again curse him. I will not again have him to go through the same thing he went through. I will not again release her, re- release her into the same bondage that she was in before. Do y'all, y'all see where I'm going right here? I, I will not again, I, I will not again, I will not again curse the ground anymore for, because of what you did. This is a grace message. I need you to get this. This is a grace message. It's, not, it's, nothing, you have, it's nothing you have done. Your righteousness is like filthy rags. He said, but I won't curse the ground for your sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore every living thing as I have done. Now, 22. Come on, 22. As the earth remains. Look at somebody say, as the earth, as the world turns. (laughs) Y'all ain't ready, man. As the world turns, as the earth remains, see Time and harvest. Okay, seed, time, and harvest. Seed, time, and har- seed, time, and say the seed, seed, time, and har- write it in the chat. Seed, time, and harvest. I need you to get the seed, time, and harvest. And cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. I want you to understand seed, time, and harvest. Summer and winter. Hot and cold. Does it still get hot? I mean, we live in San Antonio. Yeah, it still get hot. Does it still get cold? Yeah. I can't wait for it because my winter wardrobe is, woo, y'all don't even want to know. Y'all don't want to know when I bust out in my fur coat of it. <laughs> PD, you inside. It's all right. It's cold outside. I'm going to wear this fur coat. I paid a lot for this coat. Uh, <laughs> see, Tommy, me, is it, does, it, does it still get summer? Yes. Is it still winter? Yeah. Is there still day? Yeah. Is there still night? Yeah. So all these things are still applicable. Yeah. God said, I, I'm going to start a cycle. And here we are. 
I'm going to start a cycle. And now you are a part of that perpetual cycle. You still exist. You still exist in this cycle. You still exist since this started. Now, this is the second cycle God started. This is the second cycle. This is not the first cycle. Oh, I'm teaching already, PK. I know y'all want to shout, we'll shout in a second. Uh, <laughs> this is the second cycle. Okay, so that means that there was a previous cycle that started. Well, where, where did that happen? Well, it happened in Genesis chapter one. The Bible says that when God created a thing, he created a thing and that thing produced after its own kind. Everything that God made produced after its own kind. And so God made man, and man was supposed to produce under after its own kind. Well, what was its own kind? Well, in, in verse 1, oh, I'm, I mean, verse 26, chapter 1, verse 26, I don't need it, it's up here. Uh, chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible says that and he blessed them. Yeah. Wait a minute, Pastor Dante, what, this is important. Now, before God asked him to do anything, he said, and I bless them. Before I ask you to produce, I bless you. Before I ask you to have dominion, I bless you. Before I ask you to subdue and overtake, I bless you. You got to start at a place of perpetual blessing. I started at a cycle of perpetual blessing. That means that there is a blessing that was happening in my life. And when God does something, Rick, it produces again after its own kind. So that means when I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And I'm blessed. And I'm blessed. And I'm blessed again. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 that means it's still producing. What is that PK? It's still producing after its own kind. That means I'm blessed when I'm in, and I'm blessed when I'm out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come. I'm blessed when I'm gone. I'm blessed if you hate me. I'm blessed if you like me. I'm blessed if I'm doing good. I'm blessed if I'm not doing so good. I, I, I am in the place of perpetual blessing. And when God started you off. He started you off in a place of perpetual blessing. You need to put your hand on yourself and say, perpetual blessing. Perpetual. perpetual. Some of y'all don't. Google perpetual. That's okay. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying, but the perpetual. Per, perpetual. <laughs> perpetual. Before you type it in the chat, you make sure you get the spell check. Perpetual. Perpetual. Um, y'all. Y'all act like y'all just start going here. Oh. I've been doing this for what, six and a half. We had six and a half now, Kev. We had about six and a half, Kev. Yes, right at, anyway, so so I'm in a place of perpetual blessing. Before God asks anything from you, He's gonna bless you. He's not gonna ask. If God asks, if God gives you an assignment, He's already gave you the blessing that correlates with that assignment. He's already gave you the blessing. Yeah. That correlates with that assignment. So all you have to do is take a step and, and watch God put everything back in order. Are y'all with me today? So, so there is a perpetual cycle of blessing. And everything produces after its own kind. Now, Adam is like God. Adam is like God. Hold on to that. I want to get somewhere first. PK, it used to be when you went to the doctor, the doctor would say, tell me what's wrong with you. It used to be when you go to the doctor, you say, tell me what's wrong with you. You say, I'm going through, I got a little cough, snow. How long has it been going on? So it's been going on for about six months or something, whatever. He says, um, tell me about your mama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This got to do with my mama. He starts saying, tell me how you Tell me how your grandmother passed away. Right. See, what he's doing is he's investigating cycles. Yeah. 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 He's digging into cycles because whatever you are going through, somebody in your family already, oh, yeah, my family. Whatever you are going through, there's somebody. This was. This is not new. Oh, man. What I love, oh, I'm going to get in trouble here talking about my kids. What I love about young teenage kids is that they think they know stuff you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be like, you don't know, Dad. Now, he wants a revelation. When I had my son, I was 17. Yeah. I'm not that far ahead. <laughs> I'm not that. I just went through this. I just did this. I just did what you're doing. Yeah. It is a cycle. This is not new news. I, I went through the same thing with my mom and dad that you're going through right now. It's not new. It's, it's cyclical. 
It's cyclical. It's cyclical. And so that's this is why the doctor want to know, well, who in your family got high blood pressure? Who in your family? Who, how, how did this person, they start asking you about it, Uncle Bobo and Aunt Nene yeah. and all kinds of people. And all of a sudden, you start saying, well, I don't really know what really happened. And what he's trying to teach you is if you find out what happened to them, you'll find out what's going to happen to you. This is the idea of the cycles. And my life is subjugated to these cycles. My spirit is subjugated to these cycles. Ask your mama, was she depressed? She'll say, you know what? I went through a whole season where I was, she said, probably like 10 years. I was, or she'll say, I'm still going through right now. And you'll realize why you're depressed. Look, look at your father's sexual history. You got nine brothers and sisters by eight different ladies. And you can't figure out why you can't stop watching pornographic movies. You in a cycle. You in a cycle. There's things in your life that are happening that are, that, 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 it's not anything that you did. It's not anything that, that you caught. It's something that's happening in a perpetual cycle. And, and I want to go all the way back to your daddy, Adam. Because what happened with Adam is that, is that Adam was like God. Remember I just said that? Adam was like God. And so Adam had the ability, just like God, to produce something perpetually. He lived in a place. He was like God. He had dominion like God. So he could produce something perpetually. Now y'all see where I'm going with this. Yeah. Now y'all see where I'm going with this. Because Adam's sin started cycles of sin. You read all the way through the Bible. There's cycles of sin. There are things happening. There are cycles of sin. And, 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 and you can look at That's why the Bible is written generationally. So that you understand how things happen from generation to generation. They move from generation to generation. And if you ever want to br- break the cycle, you got to notice this generational pattern that's happening. You got to be, you got to make up in your mind, I'm not going to do like they did. I'm not going to live like they did. I'm going to I'm gonna do it a little bit different. There's two things you can learn from people. What to do and what, I'm going to break a cycle. This is what I'm going to do, Pastor Now. I'm going to break a cycle. We got to look though, we got to look generationally, Illy. We got to look generationally because when Adam, when Adam, when Adam ate that fruit, he didn't just eat, a, eat fruit. He started a cycle of disobedience to God. He started a cycle of disobedience. You ever notice you ain't got to teach people how to lie? Yeah. And let me start with me first. I just realized, look, right about the time I turned 14, I just, I lied. I couldn't stop. I would lie about something that don't matter. It wouldn't even give me anything. You know, usually you lie about something that's going to get you something. I would lie about something that didn't even get me. It was, it was, I didn't know. It was, it was perpetual. It was perpetual, cyclical in my life. And I'm going to spare my daddy, but I want to talk about my son. I'm going to spare my daddy. I'm going to spare you today. Okay, I'm going to spare my daddy, but I want to talk about my son. When Savon was little, when he was a baby, um, we had baby gates all over the house. Baby gates, there's gates here. Now, now, Janelle, gates control access. Oh, let me help y'all right here. Gates control access. But if you're smart enough, if you're smart enough, you can find access to places that you didn't have access to. That's, that's, that's just a little note right here. If, you, if, you, if, you, if you're slick enough, I get asked to see this. Oh, whatever. Okay, so this, this say more, we called him baby when he was a baby. We shouldn't have done that. <laughs> he was a baby too long. But we called him Baby. So like we, his, his literal name was Baby. And we would say, hey, Baby, come here, Baby. Uh, hey, and now I mean, he was like three. Like, no, 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 not three, right? Yeah. And so one day, he was, probably, he was probably like a year and a half, maybe two. And um, Tab calls me in the kitchen. And she says, we have a rat. <laughs> now, first of all, I don't play with rats. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not that tough. I have a rule. Anything, look, <laughs> anything, look, good, that's no anything that's bigger than my big toe, but smaller than my foot, I don't play. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> that's my rule. If it's big, anything that's bigger than my big toe, 
but smaller than my foot, I can't mess. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. Me and Tab both going to be up on the couch like but she said, there's a rat. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm afraid. I go in the kitchen, I'm looking around for evidence of the rat. I said, where? She said, in the refrigerator. I open up the refrigerator and she shows me a, a, a pack of weenies, <laughs> like a, a, a closed pack of weenies that haven't been opened, and a pack of cheese. And, and crumbs, it was cheese crumbs all down in the refrigerator. And, and, and if you looked at the pack of weenies, it was like two little teeth marks in the front of the... <laughs> and so I'm, tri I'm tripping, because I don't, I don't play with rodents at all. So I'm going, I'm like, oh, this is disgusting. We got a rat in our refrigerator. And so I'm taking stuff out, and I'm looking for little holes in the refrigerator and everything, I don't find no holes. But I say, well, I gotta call somebody. I sit down on the couch, and back then we got the yellow pages. Y'all don't know. <laughs> I'm about to call. I'm about to spend $150, no doubt, just for them to show up. And I start thinking, how a rat get in the refrigerator? <laughs> nah, I'm from some poor places. I ain't never seen a rat in the refrigerator. But y'all, we living bad if we got rats in the refrigerator. I, and I was like, man, I live in the East Terrace, the Wheatley Course, the New Life Village, <laughs> the Sutton Homes. Look, if you're from San Antonio, you crack it up. Look, Ebony over here crack it up. Uh, I lived in there. I ain't never seen a rat in the refrigerator. I said, baby, come here. He comes. He about this big, baby. He's strong. I said, show me your teeth. He got little rat teeth. <laughs> you got a little rat. Say, Vaughn, man. Just, I said, baby, did you do this? Yeah. Showed him that pack of wings. He said, no. <laughs> Who taught him that? Who taught him that? Now, come to find out, Dominique showed us. Say, Vaughn could climb, he could, <laughs> he could pull himself over the baby gate. He was strong enough. Oh, see, I was trying to help you and say he was strong enough to pull himself over the baby gate, and he would open the refrigerator. But he just wasn't strong enough to open the pack of weenies. <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't strong enough to open the pack, so he just tried to bite. <laughs> well, imagine you you went through all that. Don't 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 don't, don't. and you get those weenies in your hand and you thin and you think you think I won. And you can't get to <laughs> 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 He just obviously he just bit into the plastic. I said, Savon, did you do this? He said, Nobody had to teach him how to lie. Nobody had to teach him how to he he knew he had he had a skill. He had a skill, he was born with it. He was born with a perpetual ability to lie. Abraham. Abraham is, uh, I'm going to tell you a couple of quick stories. We don't get out of here. Uh, Abraham is, is uh, he, he, he's in this city called Gerar. Gerar. He's in the city called Gerar. And, and Abraham, I, I don't know about, he had a wife named Sarah. Sarah. And I don't know anything about Sarah except she had to be fine. She had to be fine, fine. She had to be, PK, she had to be fine. How you know she was fine? Well, number one, he worked 14 years to get her. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he, worked, he worked real hard to get her. But number two, listen, so he's walking through the city and the people start to see Sarah and, and, and Abraham leans over to Sarah and he says, hey, if anybody asks, you're my sister. He said, because if they find out you're my wife, they gonna kill me. But she was so fine. They would have killed the husband. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Jesus. Lord have mercy. I mean, that's, but that's, that's crazy. So he said, no. He said, tell everybody you're my sister. You my, tell everybody you're my sister. And so it gets back to the king. That's how fine Sarah, I'm, 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 I'm going to get off of this. She's so fine that the king find out. <laughs> 
And the king said, I'm, I'm about to marry her. I'm going to pull her into my life. I'm going to pull her into, into my house. I'm going to pull her into. And then all of a sudden, the king finds out that that's not his sister, that that's his wife. The king called Abraham into his office. He said, what's wrong with you, man? I would have brought curse all on my family. Yeah, come on. Just because you're a liar. Wow. I would have brought that. He said, I, I don't want the God of Abraham chasing after me. He said, no, no, no. Why, why, why wouldn't you just tell the truth? The king's name was Abimelech. I love Abimelech. Because he could have still just killed. But he was like, no. He was like, oh, no. I just want to know what you lie for. I just want to know you didn't even have to lie. You didn't even have, we would have just admired her from a distance. Said, but no. So, so Abraham has a son named Isaac. Isaac visits Gerar. It, it, I'm not making this up. This is in the Bible. Isaac visits Gerar. Uh, Genesis chapter 5, I think. No, no, no. This is not Genesis chapter 5. This is Genesis chapter... I'll get it back to you. Okay, so <laughs> Isaac visits Gerar. 16. 26. 26. 26. Okay, there he is. I'm I see it. Isaac, Abraham, 20. 26. Okay. I got time now because we're not alive. So, anyway. <laughs> right, I know, right? <laughs> okay. So, so, just so, so, good uh, Abraham takes his family on a, on a vacation to good eye. Meets Abimelech. His wife's so fine, he lies. The whole thing. <laughs> Isaac. This is Abraham's, for, this is Abraham's special son. The one he said, we talk about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's so good. He, this is his special, special son. Isaac goes on a vacation to Gerar. Guess what happens? Guess. Guess what happens? He, he, he walking with his wife, who must have also been fine. They was just able to just, they were just family. <laughs> And the king notices his wife. And guess what Isaac tells his wife to do? He said, tell him you're my sister. Y'all think that y'all think as the world turns is making this stuff up? They're getting this out the Bible. This is out of the He said, he said the, thing, the same thing that perpetual, the perpetual cyclical idea of that lie. He, Abraham never had to tell Isaac that story. He knew what to do. He was in a cycle of, oh, y'all don't know. Y'all, because if you, if you can't, the, the reason we have the Bible is so that we can apply what happened to them to our lives. And see what happened, what's happening cyclically in their lives. It happened in the same way to the same king. Abimelech was like, what the heck is wrong with y'all? <laughs> what in the world? Your daddy was here six chapters ago. He did the same thing. <laughs> But it's the same, it's the same, it's the same idea. The same, uh, David, David, we love David. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. I, I, we all want, you know, every preacher want, think he's David. So, somebody got to be Saul. Everybody loves David. Oh, I'm on the backside of a mountain. I'm tending to my sheep. I'm waiting till my chance to fight Goliath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's something, there's something perpetually wrong with me. See, see, see. The kingdom of God is one of the only places where you can be perpetually broken and perpetually blessed at the same time. So I'm broken from Adam. I'm broken from Jesse. We've talked about this a little bit, but I don't, I don't have a lot of time to get into it. But we don't really know who's David's mom, who David's mom was. Right. We do know that, that, that Jesse did not even refer to David as his actual son. Because when Samuel said, where are your sons? He presented seven children. So it is possible that David is the result of a... Um, Nefarious relationship <laughs> and enta- uh, an entanglement, if you will, if you will, and, and we we don't understand, we don't know a lot of this story, but but we know the cycle because in David's free time, he he stands on his roof and watches pornographic movies. In David's free time. 
This is what he does. David was David was a little bit of a harlot. Right. Do I need to? Okay. Y'all know. Me. Okay. Yeah, we got that one. Okay. David was a little bit of a harlot. How, Pastor Dante, how you know David was a harlot? Well, when David uh, died, the Bible said that, that he was sleeping in his bed, and they thought he might have died. And the Bible said that his servants. This is this is so good. This is weird. Look this up. The Bible said they found a pretty lady. Yeah. And they put her in the bed with him. Yeah. And they said, if he moves, he's alive. If he don't move, he dead. Yeah. Yeah. That's how, that, he could have been in a coma. <laughs> they said, if that lady get in the bed, David gonna move, he gonna do something. <laughs> Why does that matter? Well, because David had a son. Sure did. David had a son. He had a son named Amnon. And Amnon fell in love with his sister. He fell in love with his actual real sister. So much in love that he had to have her. So much in love that he had to have her and he, he raped her. He took a cycle. It seems it seemed so, seem so innocent. But you don't know what it's doing to your family line. You don't know what it's doing to your generational line. And if you don't learn how to break it, your kids going to deal with it. God told David, he said, because you did this, the sword will never leave your family. You don't understand. The sword is in your family. The sword is in your family. The sword is in. This is why you feel like you feel. This is why you fight what you fight. This is why you go through what you go through. Because it's the sword. It's the cycle of swords. And it's in your family. And it's happening. It's happening happening until somebody, oh Lord Jesus, somebody has to break the cycle. Somebody has to break the cycle. Somebody has to break the cycle, the cycle of sin. Somebody has to break the cycle. And so that's why when we read, you, you think the, gene the genealogy is for nothing, but it's there for a purpose. It's there to show you. And if you read the genealogy from David to Jesus, you'll find that in 40 and two generations, thank you, Lord Jesus, that 40 and two generations, 40 and two descendants, it took 40 and two generations of people for one person to be born that breaks the cycle. Yeah. Jesus is the cycle breaker. Jesus is the cycle breaker. Jesus is the cycle breaker. Now, let me help you right here. How do you break a cycle of perpetual brokenness? How do you break a cycle of, well, how did you break a cycle of perpetual blessing? Why, how did you break that cycle? With one seed. With one seed. One seed, one seed, one seed, one seed, one seed. Uh, PK, there is a, there, there's a study that, that what Eve ate might not have been a fruit. That it might actually have been the seed of a fruit. So if one seed can break generational blessing, then one seed, then one seed, oh, y'all with me now, then one seed, then one seed can break generational curses. See, it only takes one seed. It only takes one thing. It only takes one person. Now, the Bible says, it talks about you like a seed. It says, if you stay by yourself, if you stay by yourself, if you stay by yourself, it says, then you won't produce anything. It said, but until you fall to the ground and die, till you fall to the ground, see, see, you gotta die to that perpetual cycle of brokenness. You gotta die to that perpetual cycle that kept you bound. That perpetual cycle of anger where your granny was angry and your mama was angry and now you angry all the time. That perpetual cycle of despair where nobody had anything. Let me help you right here. That perpetual cycle of poverty. Where everybody do broke stuff. Broke people do broke stuff. We live in a broken way. And all of a sudden, we, I, I say, well, I, I just can't get ahead. I'm in a cycle. Yeah. But I got to be the one. I got to be the one. I got to be the seed that falls to the ground and dies and say, I don't have to do this broke stuff anymore. I got to have some discipline about myself. I don't got to be like that. I don't got to talk back to my husband. Oh, Jesus. I, I got to have some discipline about myself because if I act like her, I'm going to be like no disrespect to your mother or your granny or your grandmother, but you know where the flaws were. You can see them. You can see them. 
And it's, just, it's cyclical. It's cyclical. It's cyclical. No matter where I go in the city, people walk up to me. They don't even know my name. They never seen me in my life. They look me in the face and say, Donnie Banks. <laughs> That's my dad. Donnie Banks. See, they see the cycle. But it's not just in my looks. It's in my behavior. It's in everything that I do. Now, I love this. I love telling this story because my dad was a cycle breaker. Our family had existed in poverty for so long. We had existed in poverty for so long. We were impoverished for so long. My mom and my dad were on crack till I was about 14 years old. And all of a sudden, I, I will never forget this. My dad was wrestling with me on the ground. He used to be so strong, he had turned so skinny. He was so small. He was wrestling with me on the ground. We were playing, we were laughing. I had to be nine or 10 years old. And he looked me in my face, Crystal, and you know what he said? He said, I'm going to change my life. Man. Just like that. No, 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 no. No angels showed up. Yeah. No trumpets blew. Yeah. Right. No dramatic music that lets you know we're in the third act of the movie. He just looked at me and said, I made a decision. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to change my life. It, Two days later, my dad went into a real rehabilitation home, and I have never since then seen him drink, smoke, cut, well... <laughs> I love you, Dad. <laughs> I've never seen him do any of that perpetual stuff. So you know what? When I got offered drugs, I was able. To, I saw a cycle breaker. I saw there's something in my when I when I got offered this life because you know, the devil will set you up. Let me hear. You. I want to help you right here. I had a, a oh I had a difficult time. Yeah. 16 years old. I lived by myself. I had my own apartment, yeah. my own car. Yeah. I saw myself going in a direction that didn't look like where I wanted to go. And I had to, just like my dad made a decision, I had to make a decision. But just like he did make a decision, I could make a decision because there was a cycle breaker in my life. There was somebody who was able to say, I'm not gonna do this no more. I'm not gonna live like this no more. I, I, I'm gonna clean up what I messed up. Jesus, because there's a cycle. And what I'm telling you is, You've been dealing with a perpetual, a perpetuation of cycles. God said, this is the season. This is the season and all, it, all you have to do is make a decision. You know how you get a new harvest? You plant a new seed. That's how I get a new harvest. I just plant a new seed. I plant a new seed. And when you put enough seeds in the ground, listen, listen, seeds are stronger than weeds. Y'all need to hear me right here. Seeds are stronger than weeds. If you plant enough seeds in the ground, they'll overpower those weeds. It's just, it's, it's, it's drops. Oh, I thought I forgot about that. It's drops. How you put seeds in the ground? Drops. Drops. Here it goes. Yeah. I did a kindness. Yeah. I paid for the groceries for the people behind me. Yeah, yeah it sounds crazy to you, but I'm building something. <laughs> sounds ridiculous to you. Yeah, that's fine. But I'm building something. I was, at, <laughs> I was at Starbucks trying to be kind. I was like, uh, they said, somebody paid for your drink. You drink ahead of me. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. I mean, it's just me in the car, $6, whatever. I said, they said, would you like to pass it on and pay for the person behind me? I said, sure, absolutely. What's their order? $27. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. How many people in that car? I just paid it. It's, it doesn't matter. God is. Do, 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 I saw this as a test of my faith. I saw this as a test of my faith. But I, I didn't lose. I won. I won. And, and, and hear me right here. When you have a forest, you don't know what seed brought that tree. Let me help you right here. Because every time some preacher gets on the stage and they say, when you do this, in two days, you're going to get that. But when you really plant seeds, you don't know what seed. 
turned out to be that fool. So I'm just gonna keep sowing. I'm just when it when it seed time. Oh, y'all thought I wasn't gonna come back to that. Seed time and harvest. While it's time to seed, because the Bible says there will be a time for everything. Ecclesiastes, we didn't read that one, but it's the same thing. Ecclesiastes, there's a time to sow and a time to re- Listen, some of y'all, you're in a sowing season. Use that as an opportunity to sow. When you get to a reaping season, you don't know what you sowed in the sowing season that turns into your harvest. But if I want to see a new cycle, I got to plant a new seed. This is the place right here, and I hear God saying this is the season to plant a new seed. I always preach, as, as Pastor Kevin, I always preach messages. I always preach messages in relation to seed in September. Not, not money. Seed. Planting. Growth. Fruitfulness. Cycles. These, are, these all come. These all come. Grow. These all come in, in, in September. Why? Because that, the fall is not harvest time. I know it sounds like it, you, you, we, we, America, we think fall, harvest, everything. But the fall is not harvest time. <laughs> the fall is not harvest. You know what's harvest time? The spring. This harvest happens in the spring. But I got to sow in the fall for what I want to see in the spring. Some of y'all, yeah, you, you got to sow right now for what you want to see in the future. You got to sow right now for what your kids going to do in the future. You got to sow right now for what your family's going to be in the future. And I see you out there. And I, I, I'm done. And Pastor Niles, you can come on. But I see you out there trying to do your thing, work, working hard on your little thing, and that nobody's paying attention. You only got three likes or seven likes or whatever, and you working hard. But you don't understand the seeds that you sowing in this season. You don't understand. You're trying to start something in this season. And when, you, when you're trying to start something, it's difficult. It's difficult to see what your seed now will equal later. But if you want to break a cycle, you got to start right there. You got to start right there. I see you. I see what you're saying about you trying to be a different person and trying to be kinder and trying to, you, you breaking the cycle. I see what you're doing with your, with your son and what you're trying to teach him about how you're behaving right now and how, and yes, I, I don't have to do everything right, but you know my heart is right. And that's how I break cycles. I see you building a business. I see you, but keep building. This is what you, 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 I see what you and your husband are doing. And y'all have to work hard now so they won't have to work as hard. It's, it's cyclical. I see what you're doing. I see how you're building a home for you and your son. I see you putting it together. You're doing, you're working hard now so he can understand. He won't know anything other than this is how we live. This is what we do. We laugh, we talk about the church kids around here. These amazing kids, Olivia, and Christian, Rennie. They, they don't have context for what it's not like to just lay down on the floor in the sanctuary. They, they live with a perpetual understanding that this is the way we live. We ask for me in my house. Keep bringing them. Keep putting them in the house of the Lord. Keep planting new seeds. This is the season. You got a business? Keep sowing into it. I know you're not seeing what you want to see out of it. It's okay. This is a sowing season so you can break a cycle. Some of y'all have never seen what a successful marriage looks like. Keep working on it. Keep working on it. Go to your husband. Go to your wife. Say, you know what? I'm trying to be what I've never seen. This is the hardest thing ever. It's, it's difficult for me to be what I never saw. It's, it's difficult. I never had an example, but I'm trying. Help me. Instead of trying to act like you know it all, no, plant a new seed right here. 
This is the season. God, I hear God saying, this is the season to plant a new seed. Yes, I'm going to harvest some things in this season, but I'm going to plant some new things. Yes, there's a blessing for me in this season, but I'm going to plant some new things. Because I expect new blessings. If you want to break a cycle, listen, listen, I want to talk about this cycle, this cyclical thing, of, and, and we've started to normalize anxiety. Oh, everybody's got it, so I don't, it's not a bad thing, because everybody's got it. The truth is, the Bible says that we got to cast all our cares upon Jesus before he cares for us. I, 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 I want you, oh, I'm going to get myself in trouble right here. Sure, go to therapy. Fine. I'm totally cool with it. But if you don't cast your cares on Jesus, that therapist ain't helping. If you don't have the rock in your life, that therapist can't help you. You got to have the rock in your life. You got to have the rock in your life so you can define what, what, what is good and what's not good. Some of y'all need to talk. You don't need the medicine. Listen, hear my heart right here. This is the season. You, you've been carrying anxiety. You've been carrying depression. Listen, go, let's go here. You've been carrying anxiety. You've been carrying depression. You've been carrying a weight that's not yours. Bible says that we got to cast every weight, cast our cares upon Jesus because he cares for you. Some of y'all been carrying your mama's drama for years because she carried her mama's drama and she carried her mama's drama. Break a cycle. Plant a new seed. It's, it can start today. Cast your cares upon Jesus because he cares for you. Listen, listen, listen. I want to pray for you. If you've been going through it, if you've been experiencing depression, anxiety, I want to, I want to pray for you. But listen, what I want to tell you is you got to let it go. See, see, there are, there are chains. You've been unchained, but you got to loose yourself. A lot of us, we've been unchained. We heard it. Like, I hear the chains falling. We heard it. We heard it all. But 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 we never unloosed ourselves. That's why Jesus said, if, if, it's, if it's bound in heaven, it'll be bound on earth. But if it's loosed on heaven, it'll be loosed on earth. You got to trust God. Say, I want to be free today. I want to be free today. And I want to pr pray for you to be free. But if I if I pray for you to be free and you never get up and you never walk in freedom, then, then you can be sitting there bound like a horse tied to a chair. A horse tied to a bucket. You think you're bound. You're not bound. You're stronger than anything that you're tied to. But here's the season now. Trust me. Here's the season now. If you believe, I'll stand with you in faith. And the Bible says, where two or three agree, nothing will be impossible for them. We got the guarantee of two or three. Me and you, we have the guarantee of two or three. This is the season now where you can break the cycle. How do I get a new harvest? I plant a new seed. Start today. Plant a new seed. If you've been experiencing anger, depression, anxiety, I want to pray for you. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for each and every person under the sound of my voice, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are not you are not absent, God. You are present. You are not absent, God. Lord, you said in our weakness, thank you, Lord Jesus. You are made strong. Your, your strength is made perfect in my weakness, Lord Jesus. Lord, so now I come to you weak. I come to you broken, saying I, I don't have the strength to get over this. I don't have the strength to get through this, God. But I believe in you, and you are my strength. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are my strength, Lord Jesus. You said your joy was my strength. Your joy was my strength. So I can take joy. I can trade joy. I can give you my sorrow and take your joy. It's the beautiful exchange, God. So today we trade in our sorrow. We trade in our anxiety. Oh, we trade in our anger, our meanness. It's not you. It's not you. We trade in our anger and our meanness for your joy and your peace. We, we, we trade in our, our, our walls that we've set up, God, to protect ourselves, God. But 
we trade them over to you. You are our protector, Lord Jesus. You are our great defender. Lord, we love you, God. Today is the day we break silence. We give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Listen, if you, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. It's a very simple prayer. Just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, or let's say you just believed it for the first time, I want to accept you into the body of Christ. I'm, we're so happy that you have connected with the body of Christ. We want you to type number one. Just type number one right there in the chat. Just type number one right there in the chat. It doesn't matter when you're watching this. It could be 3 p.m. or 3 a.m. Type of number one right there in the chat. See, you got to take a step. You got to take a step. This is a small step of faith. Somebody's going to connect with you remind you that we love you and that we're here for you and that you've been accepted into the kingdom. We want you to find a Bible believing church and get connected. Listen, if you heard this message and something in this message resonated with you, something in this message connected with you, you said, I, I think I heard the voice of my pastor today. Listen, I, I heard a story that said that a hundred sheep can be in one pen and there can be two shepherds on either side, but the shepherd whose voice that sheep recognizes, that sheep will run to that shepherd. If you recognize my voice today, no, I think this is my pastor. I don't care. You've been going to your mama's church, your grandma's church, your great grandma's church. It's time to break the cycle in. Yeah, I see. It's time to break a cycle in. Listen, tradition is not going to heal your family. Only Jesus can do that. Only Jesus can do that. If there's brokenness in your family, then you got to plant a new seed so you can get a new harvest. That's you today. You say, I, 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 think, I, I think I hear the voice of my pastor. Listen, I want to be your pastor. I would love to be your pastor. I don't know everything, but I'll tell you everything I know. And I'll pray with you. And I'll consult with you. And I'll love on you. And I'll call out your name before the Father like I do for all these people in this place. Listen, if that's you today, I just want you to type three in the chat. Just the number three. That's it. You can just type the number three in the chat. And we know that that means that you will connect with one of the greatest church experiences this side of heaven. We believe in you. And listen, we're about to gather back together again. This is this is a, a precursor to what God is about to do. We're about to assemble like Voltron. Safely. <laughs> and, and socially distanced. <laughs> but we're about to put the thing back together. You want to be a part of that? We'll have some information about it really soon. Also, I want to make one more announcement. One more pronouncement. <laughs> Nobody here has heard this before. October 2nd, we will release our album. And we'll something to the world. October 2nd. October 2nd. Starting next Friday. Starting next Friday, you can pre-order it. You can get it. You can have it ready so that on October 2nd at midnight, it's just going to drop down into your iCloud, drop down into your iTunes, drop on your Spotify playlist. Listen, we're so excited about this. And we're going to be sharing more about it really soon. But I'm, I'm believing God for the new thing that he's doing. It's about time to do a new thing. He's doing a new thing right here at God Chasers. We love you. I love you. We're praying for you. See you soon.